Welcome back to Las Vegas. It's Alex Belfield in Sin City. Uh, we've come to one of the most iconic casinos and hotels in Las Vegas, the Stratosphere, which is home to an incredible performer called Frankie Marino. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Well, I'm. let me be honest with you. I'm not in a best mood after seeing your performance. I'm sorry. Oh, what well, does that mean? What is let, it? Let me tell you, in England, you probably don't know this. I, I'm a radio guy, but I do a live show. I'm an entertainer. I do comedy. I play the piano. I do comedy clubs, variety clubs. I do an act. And I thought I was quite good till I saw you, and I realized I'm actually pathetic. I mean, seriously, I'm average at very best compared to you. It's not good for a man's ego seeing your show. Well, you just need to drink more whiskey because then everything feels like it's perfect. <laughs> I have never seen a, another performer on stage. I'm going to get to my accolades of you later, but I've never seen anybody who is so versatile, so committed, uh, so full of passion, and delivers so brilliantly and consistently. Congratulations, Frankie. Seriously, an amazing performance tonight. Thank you so much. I mean, you know, it's every show we just try to beat the last show. You know what I mean? We're just, we're not, we're competing against ourselves. You're sickeningly brilliant in a sense that your piano playing is classical. I mean, clearly yeah. you are very, very good at it um, beyond anybody else I think I've seen in this town. Um, you were playing from six months old, I'm guessing. Uh, <laughs> six months old. No, I, uh, yeah, obviously, I mean, if you look around the room, all this stuff, I'm a big Mozart, Beethoven, I, I, classical. I grew up with that stuff and... Uh, but um, you know, I just I just started when you know the the age I grew up in, and my dad was playing old records of guys like Jerry Lee Lewis and stuff like that, and which was not cool for my era. You know, they were growing up, they were listening to In Sync, and um, but I listened to uh, I listened to that stuff and just it got in me, and I could just do it. I don't know, it was weird. And those fingers, seeing them on the screen, how quickly they move and the stuff you can do is just breathtaking. And then we're sat here probably in the most decadent dressing room I've ever been in in Las Vegas. And I've been in most of them. You even have your own grand piano in another room. It's incredible. Yeah, that's a that's actually a custom Baldwin that was made for us. It was played once before by Shakira on the Grammys and then they gave it to us. And uh, yeah, this dressing room is pretty, uh, it's unique. We're, we're lucky in that sense that we get, that was part of my deal here. Like my contract, I said, you know, we, we on and off the stage, we want to be happy. <laughs> right. You know? Because this is a tough time. I mean, most guys most guys here are paying for their own shows. They're paying for their own publicity. If they want two dressing rooms, they have to pay for two dressing rooms so they don't bother. It yeah. seems like they're committed to you as much as you're committed to them. Yeah. I mean, this this whole thing was, it's a win-win. Because, I mean, for me, we needed we needed a push like this, you know? And, and for them, they hadn't had a headliner here in a long time. So... It was an exciting thing for both of us to get involved in, and it's six months in. We started winning all the awards, the headliner of the year, the uh, all that stuff, and, and, and so because of that, they're all very cool to us. We're very cool to them, and everyone's happy. You know? So where do we start then? I mean, we come into the casino and we see on the billboards that uh, Simon Cowell says you're amazing. He doesn't say anybody's amazing. So there's an accolade to start with. I was I went out to London actually, and we were we were we were starting a project. I was starting a project. Uh, through Sony um, Epic with Simon Cowell and it, it never ended up materializing um, but we got to perform for him and work with him and, and that was really cool and then uh, I came back here to Vegas and said you know what let's use the advice that he gave and do the stuff he was doing and and we started changing things up and dressing a little differently and I, he's right does he yeah. know what he's doing? I mean, I see that One Direction are the biggest thing in America right now. It's beyond me. I mean, they just look like four kids that, that have never done it before. But, I mean, somebody's buying their records. You know, I mean, it's a weird industry right now. I mean, is he doing something right? I mean, I think it. I think it. I he's proven himself to, you know. I mean, is it the way that everybody wants to do it? Not necessarily, but he's doing it right for what the industry changes. Like, every six months, it's a new industry. The way things sell, the way things are hot. So, our thing is always try to be... You know, just to just to keep refreshing ourselves every every six months, just change it. Because if you saw us and then you come back in next year, I don't want you to see the same thing. I want you to go like, whoa, that was better. You know, so I mean, he he's he's got it down to a science for that for sure. You know, um, there's a handful of guys these days that really get it, and it's not you can't you can't understand the business necessarily. I think because it does change, you can just grasp the fact that it's going to change and 
be one of the guys that tries to help it change rather than wait for it to change and change with it, you know? Do you know why I so admire you? I have seen nearly every show on this strip in the last two weeks, and I've seen people who basically have big boobs and get $100,000 contracts because they've got boobs. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of talent to me in having a boob job. I, I struggle with it as a performer, as a guy who loves music and things. You clearly have dedicated your life to your craft, and it pays off. Do you, do you know what I mean? There's a certain yeah. irony, isn't there, in this business, that you either go one way, which is your way, the creative way, or you just get your knockers done? Well, we definitely took the long way. I mean, we took the long way, but in the end, everything in this room, we design, you know, every, everything we do on that, every single thing on that stage is exactly how I want it to be. Um, except for all the mistakes, you know? <laughs> but I mean, but everything, everything is, the songs we play, there's no, there's nobody telling us what to do. We took the hard way of making sure we had creative control in everything we do in our career and and that's that's the different approach than just signing a deal and jumping in and doing what you're told and sometimes what you're told is by the the people the simon cowles or something who know what they're doing but with us we just decided to take a chance and and it it luckily worked out and we're, we're all trained you know I, i'm i've trained 30 years in theory i mean i've been playing since i was three you know so Take this as a compliment, and it's meant as such. You're here doing big business in Las Vegas, and God bless you. All the accolades are coming, and I'll give mine at the end. Um, but why aren't you filling arenas around the world? Why doesn't everybody know your name? Because you're so brilliant, and you deserve to. I mean, and let's talk about the look as well. Yeah. The ladies just find you delicious. <laughs> That's a feeling I've never had. How does that feel to have ladies find you attractive? It's disgusting. I don't know. <laughs> it's almost inhuman, isn't it? Yeah. I you wish know. you were me sat here with this face and this silly ginger hair. I mean, is it would, it would it be nice one day to walk through a casino and not be noticed? Life would be so much simpler, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, you know, you know uh, what was the question? I don't know. There were 16 <laughs> questions in there. Um, uh, firstly, the appearance doesn't hurt, does it? Oh, no. You know, well, you know... I, I've never been about that, but I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm thankful knowing how the business works. I'm thankful that I, I don't have four noses or something like that, you know, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely, you know, people see and hear everything with their eyes. So, I mean, it's, they're listening to the songs, but they're, it's not just the way you look, it's the way you're, it's the way you, the lights are on the stage. It's the way you present yourself. It's presentation is, it's when you buy a record or you buy a, a present for yourself, the way it's packaged is a big deal. So, I mean. You know, I, I wish it wasn't that, but I'm aware of that. And it's hard for me because I'm a very trained musician. You know, I mean, music is, I, it's my blood. So I hate the fact that a lot, of, a lot of my colleagues and stuff don't necessarily train in it, but they got a pretty face and they get it. So, but that's cool. I mean, it's the business. But, but for us, we really, um, you know, we really, we really take it serious. And we, and we really, you know, it's about the music. It's about the getting people to not just buy the music but connect to the music because if you connect to the music then you got then you got like a Beatles thing or an Elvis thing or a Frank Sinatra thing where people connect instead of just a cool song they go like that's cool and it's a hit of the year so I, what we've done is we've really tried to build an arsenal to get to this point try to tweak it this show what you're seeing is one year old it's one year old so why we haven't been touring and everything like that well that's the step we're hitting right now so we're going to start touring and this last record we just released um we went into dancing with the stars in america here and um record just went through the roof and uh so now we're setting up tours um international you know europe asia and we're, we're going to do all that stuff and um and hope that people like the music outside of america you know what I love about your show, just on a few geeky levels, the sound is second to none. Congratulations on that, because a crap PA system is not going to do anybody any yeah. favors. It's, it's a concert. We, we wanted it to be, we, you know, it's a little loud, but we wanted it to be a concert instead of a, a Vegas show, not I, stale. And I noticed as well as I stood by your counter where you're flogging your CDs, um, there was a guy probably in his 80s just wanting to shake the hand of your brother to say congratulations. I think that's amazing in this town that I can sit there at 30 and he can sit there at 87 or whatever and, and think it's amazing. Yeah. That, that's great about Las Vegas. That's, that's, that's one of the nice things about Vegas. And the, and the cool thing is like the crowd is on tour. You know, you're from England. They're from Australia. They're from France. They're from Boston. They're from Texas. The Yemen. Yeah, I don't even know what that means, but but they but they buy it sounds Yiddish, doesn't it? <laughs> but they they all buy a CD or something. They go home and they show it to their friends, and so it it spreads quickly that way. You know what I mean? Um, 
But yeah, Vegas is cool because you do get a wide variety. We even get sometimes, sometimes right here and there's, you know, parents with like eight year old kids and stuff that can't get into the show, but they want to take a picture afterwards and they get a CD and it's pretty cool. And and the, I think the kind of stuff we're doing and, and what we're writing is, it's positive stuff. You know, it's not, it's not dark rock stuff or it's not about showing off what we can do. We are all Everyone in the band's a great musician. I mean, they're phenomenal. But but the, it's not about showing off that. It's utilizing it in the song when it needs to be utilized for a reason. You know, when it's time to show what the guitar player can do, take it. Otherwise, play the part of the song, and, and that translates to the crowd. You know what I mean? You really can tell that. And what I love tonight is the horn section. I mean, I always fall for that. It, it to me, is the epitome of a great live show. If you can hear those horns beautifully, clearly, and with such great talent, I mean, it just makes a show. Well, you know what we did for a long time? We, we were just a four-piece band, and we would do, because um, my brothers Tony and Ricky, we both, we all three write the music. So we travel. We go all over the countries everywhere to write music we'll we'll record ourselves in front of the pyramids or in front of the eiffel tower or in front of you know in vietnam you know and and we'll write them and we'll bring them back here and then we would work it up and we would try to write like a country song because we love country music we would try to write a a, a pop song because we love pop a funk song a classical thing and we would write all these songs and and when audiences would listen to it they'd like it but they didn't understand it so we said well why don't we expand the band and mesh it so we'll put the funk and the jazz with the horns right the strings will write all the arrangements for them classically have the rock rhythm section and then our lyrics i wouldn't say are country but they have that element of storytelling um which to me is more 50s 60s kind of a thing you know but uh so you got all these mixed elements so then it kind of creates a sound that you it, you've heard it all before but it's fresh you know you know, that's exactly what I was saying to my friend through the show, that I can't understand how you do what you do because it's very familiar and it's very warm. Wait a minute, this is just your friend, not your girlfriend? Well, uh, let me... Let, uh, can we talk about this afterwards? Because <laughs> the night is yet young. Okay, this is okay. Las Vegas. No, okay. this is my friend. I've known her five years and we, we've been good friends. In, she's from Vegas. What can I do? I'm nice in England. I mean, <laughs> Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, keep your hands to yourself. Everything's fine. You see, already you can't keep focus. Uh, let me just finish this interview real quick, babe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, back to your music. Um, yeah, yeah. What I was saying during the show was how, how familiar this was. This is going well, isn't it? Um, what I was saying was how familiar your music is and how brilliant you are at, at sort of segueing between one minute classical piano to then something like a Garth Brooks tune, which is sort of yeah. rang out as a, a classic tune. Um, it, it feels like we know these tunes, but they're totally original. And when you said uh, this evening, I'm going to be singing all my own material, my heart sank because I thought, oh, my God, this is going to be the longest 90 minutes of my life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what most... See, now people are coming into town. They don't know who we are. They go, I never heard of him. And what does he do? Uh, a piano player. You know, and he plays songs we've never heard. So I think, I think people come in pretty much with the arms folded going like, all right, what do you got? But it's... You know, I used to write as a staff songwriter for a long time in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, not just country music, everything. But, but the whole trick was learning the whole art of writing commercially. Meaning... By the time it comes to the second chorus, you need to feel like you've heard the song a hundred times, not for the first time. And so we've really kind of mastered tweaking our music to sound familiar, you know. And uh, it's not easy to do that, but but it definitely the impact is stronger when you hear it for the first time, and then you give it more of a chance as a as a first time listener, you know. And again, it's such an amazing band and a team around you. And of course, it's a family affair. There's your dad sat in the audience. There's your brother stood next to you. There's your brother running through the audience. What's all that about? <laughs> well, well, dad, dad, mom, you, my mom and dad used to come to almost all the shows. My dad, I don't think, has missed a show uh, here. And uh, he played a little guitar uh, before. And I mean, he's he's the reason I play music because we had music and instruments all over the house. You know, um, Tony. My brother, uh, the bass player, started playing bass at 14 because my bass player quit and bought him a little bass, a little junior bass, and said, learn these songs and you can play on the stage and practice them with it. And he'd come practice them with me and then he started doing on the stage and we're like, huh, he's 14, he's got this down. By the time he's 16, he'll really have it down. He looked like he was 50 years old at 16 years old. And uh, we all have that problem. No, I mean, he was, you know, he was tall. He grew a full beard. You know what I mean? And, 
And um, we'd walk around, and I'd be 10 years older than him, and he'd get carded, and I wouldn't get, or I'd get carded, and he wouldn't. And so I, I thought, like, wow, this could be really cool because, you know, the, I grew up on the 50s stuff too, like the Everly Brothers and all that. I'm going, like, it's really cool when you get that sibling thing going because it's just natural. You know, you don't have to work with someone to learn them. You naturally, I know where his brain's going to go on his instrument, and I can follow that, and vice versa. Uh, Ricky, um, he's the youngest, he's 23. 23 and uh, he started writing with us too and, and started coming to us later like because me and Tony were now writing songs he'd come and goes check this out check this out and he'd make this little work tape and we go like hmm that's awesome so we'd start working on it and found out we all wrote well together uh, but Ricky was too busy spending all the money he was making on the songs and learning an instrument so he was gambling it all away so <laughs> so we figured well he doesn't play an instrument, so let's let him run through the crowd and smack people. So, <laughs> but no, but the three of us, the three of us write all the music. Everything you heard, we all write together. And if one of us comes up with an idea, the first thing we do is call the other guys and you know share the idea. So it's it's consistent. The, you know. Congratulations on everything. I mean, this is my last night. I was almost dreading coming tonight. I'm exhausted. I've seen something like 40 shows. I've spoken to all the stars. Um, so here we go then. Where, where do we go with the show? Well, it's the best energy I felt in a room in my entire two weeks of being here. You are clearly the most talented headliner I've seen in Las Vegas, um, including Celine Dion, who I've seen, who was magnificent. But I mean, we just beat her, by the way. Just We just beat her out for a uh, best long run concert. Well, I mean, it's not surprising to, to see somebody be so sickeningly brilliant at everything you did. I mean, you prove you could play the piano, yada, yada, yada. You could play the guitar and then you come on with euphonium. And I mean, there's nothing you can't do, is there really? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're just goofing around, getting buzzed and having fun. <laughs> hey, listen, and, and the only show I've known to hand out shots for free to the audience. I mean, if there's any other reason to buy a ticket, you get free whiskey. You know what it's you know what it's all ultimately about? And I mean, and that goes back again, like to the Elvis and the Frank Sinatra, the guys who are the big, the big ones, the Beatles, like the big ones. It's it's not about going on and putting on a show. It's and that's and that's what like that's one thing that was a pet peeve of like when when we were playing before in bars, we'd go watch other bands in bars and they're putting it on like they're in an arena in a bar, or they're in an arena and they're doing like a bar act, you know, and it's going like treat the room for the room, you know, whether wherever you're playing, and that's one thing that we always really said like no matter what, when I walk on the stage for a song, I, I try to sum the crowd up, how many people we got here. What kind of crowd are they? Are they into this right off the bat? Am I going to have to work for this? And make sure we really make everybody feel like they're supposed to be here, you know? And uh, that's why, I mean, we're doing the Crown Royal thing, giving out the whiskey to people. Just, just because it's like, it truly to us, we're just throwing a party. We're hosting a party. And, and we're not trying to go, you know, hey, yeah, yeah. I mean, we do crazy tricks on the piano and the band is them crazy musicians and you know, we're doing funny little stuff, but but really it's about us having fun and you guys having fun. And if we're not having fun, you're not having fun. And if you're not having fun, we're not having fun. Mm. So it's like, well, let's all have fun. And if that means go out and take a few minutes to ask, ask, ask questions and, uh, you know, answer questions or uh, just, just take a moment to actually be a human being up there, you know what I mean? And it seems like they relate to that a lot more. You know, if someone wants a drink, come on up. We, we're sponsored by a whiskey brand and we'll share it, you know? Sharing the music, we're sharing the fun. It's, it's not about us at that moment, you know? And again, what is great about this show is it's what Vegas is all about. It's about putting one man on stage with great people behind him who can just knock you out. And let's face yeah. it, that's what Frank did, that's what Sammy did, that's what Dean did, that's what all these people have done through the years. And that's what, that's what when we first came here, when we first started putting this together, I, it was really more about the, forget the lights, forget the sound, forget the, the big orchestra about it. Let's just get a product. Let's get a handful of songs that people are going to like, that are going to hit people. Handful of songs and just make that entertaining and fun. Now, sprinkle in a great light show, a great sound system, add strings, add horns. You, you, you're starting with a good uh, foundation, you know what I mean, where it's, it's solid and there's a, there's a point to it. It's not, just, it's not just going up there and playing music. Where we have a point. And, and I didn't want to do it. You know, my, my idols are Elvis and Frank Sinatra. Those guys went out there with a microphone and a spotlight and kicked your butt. You know, and, and, and there's some amazing shows. The, the Cirque shows out here are amazing. I can't compete with that. I can't. They're, I mean, the lights, the, the money behind that, the dancing. I can't compete with that. But what I can bring is just a different element of one-on-one. -on -one. 
But you know, you'll never beat one man stood in front of an audience with an ability like yours. And if my sycophancy could get any worse during this interview, vocally, I mean, just exceptional. <laughs> I have never heard anybody make really difficult stuff look so effortless. I mean, you were definitely born to do this. And again, when you sing Bridge Over Troubled Water uh, towards the end, I mean, it crescendos. You know what you're doing with the lighting and the effects and the pausing and all that affectation that you do. But but under that is a really tricky song to sing. And, well, and you nail it. A song like that, what we did, I used to just go out there on stage and there was a moment in the stage where I would just every night I'd play a different song and one night I mean I'd listen to something on the radio on the way here and go like ah, I know that song I'll play it just so we had a casual moment and I started playing uh, that song one night and the crowd went really crazy for it so we did it again and, and we did it again and it just worked it was just me and the piano no band no lights or nothing we just put a spotlight on and it, it just killed so we're like I don't want to put the band in the lights because it works so we said do this video just what I'm doing and build it around that rather than us try to build pauses and dramatic all that was just what it was and then they built the lights to that the band we wrote the arrangement to that and that's why like that's a strong I mean what a Paul Simon you know Simon Garfunkel song that's a huge song so I mean you, the song does it by itself you know so we're just and that's and that's being a songwriter I mean we're entertainers but being a songwriter it's really about that it's about the songs and I mean how do we make the song be the best it can be because when you leave and and you buy the record you don't have that show anymore those lights aren't going on I'm not standing in front of you pouring you a shot of Crown Royal all you got is the music the music has to be strong if to make you last as a supporter or a fan or a friend you know what I mean it's got it's, it's got to it's got to have longevity to it and we try to put that into the music that's our thing for me to see a brand new show is always thrilling I've seen many of these shows many many times you mentioned Cirque I've seen them a hundred times as spectacular as there are there is nothing like discovering someone who is as brilliant as you are I have not used the word genius during this trip at all you can listen through all the thousands of hours I've done you are a genius congratulations oh, a, a phenomenal talent that was God blessed or something it's sickeningly annoying <laughs> um, and I wish you were less good uh, for my own personal <laughs> ego but there you are you can't have everything I mean you've got the looks of a sort of Enrique thing that the girls are loving uh, and the talent beyond anything I've seen Elton, Billy Joel, you're up there I mean the piano playing seriously is, is phenomenal and your vocal power and strength and the way you hit it is, is second to none, congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much, I really appreciate that. So come and see Frankie Millioner then, he's here at the Stratosphere and uh, you deserve to be an international megastar, seriously, if you get the chance to see him uh, Google him and see what he's all about, thank you for talking to me. Thanks for having me